Yeah, welcome back. Well, for the week ended 21st of February 2022, deals dropped almost 25% week on week. And that's on the FX Commodity Market Summary, uh, where we have joining us now Michael Martins, Portfolio Manager of FX, to tell us what happened and some other issues concerning that. Hello, Michael. Good morning. Hi, Ini. Good morning. It is always a pleasure to be here. Good to have you, Michael. So tell us uh, what happened. We had a drop in the, the deals for the week. Um, thank you very much, Ini. Um, so if you look broadly at the table um, in front of you, um, just to give a bit of a summary with regards to what happened on the exchange um, in the week under consideration, um, the total value of transactions traded on the exchange uh, went up by 78.44% from 2.18 billion naira to close the trading week at 3.89 billion naira. Uh, the total number of contracts traded on the exchange went up by almost 30% from 9.46 million contracts to close the week at 12.27 million contracts. The number of deals, however, fell by 23.84% from 709 deals to close the week at 540 deals. Uh, we also saw a slight decline in the Apex Commodities Index, which is the ACI, which fell from 494.77 points to close to trading week at 481.87 points to lose 2.61%. Uh, the Apex Export Index, the AEI, also fell ever so slightly by 0.46% from 195.65 points to close the week at 194.75 points. With regards to the volume of contracts traded on the exchange, like I said earlier, there was a 29.73% increase, uh, with a major increase coming with soybean, which traded up from 189,000 contracts to close to trading week at 4.36 million contracts. Paddy rice also went up from 877 contracts last week to trade over 1.4 million contracts this week. With regards to the decline in volume, maize fell uh, from 8.83 million contracts last week to trade just 5.86 million contracts this week. And sorghum also fell by 429,000 contracts last week um, to close this week at just 196,000 contracts. With regards to the price changes on the exchange, we only saw an uh, increase with cashew, which went up by 8.1%. 1.2%, gaining 49.199 in the contract uh, value to close the trading week at 654.91 uh, Naira. Um, the other commodities lost value with maize being the biggest loss, uh, losing 2.51% to close the trading week at 241.85 Naira per kilogram. Soybean also lost 0.19% um, to close the trading week at 409.14 uh, naira per kilogram. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have paddy rice, which fell by 1.02% to close to trading week at 227.99 naira per kilogram. Um, some other commodities also lost value, but their losses were marginal over the course of the week. Um, so that's largely most of the changes that we saw on the exchange in the week under consideration. All right. So um, from a historical, uh, historical data, what effect does the dry season harvest for grains have on commodities prices? Um, thank you very much, Ini. Um, so if you look at uh, the dynamics that very often play out in the commodities market, uh, we have mentioned how there is a wet season cultivation and there is also a dry season cultivation. Uh, but what the first thing you must note um, is that the dry season cultivation doesn't, doesn't cut across board. Um, it only applies to a few commodities, uh, the, the biggest of which would be, of course, uh, rice cultivation, which tends to start um, around December, tending towards January. We also have a bit of maize cultivation in certain areas. And then lastly, but certainly not least, we have wheat. Um, with regards to its impact on price, there is very little to no effect um, uh, in terms of the production volume that comes out, particularly for rice. Um, I must also say here that for rice in particular, the yield per hectare is better during the dry season um, than it is during the wet season harvest. Um, but why the dry season is important, and I must say this, is because the dry season cultivation, the volume that comes out during harvest, um, acts as a buffer um, you know, for the demand that, you know, that is very often available in the market. Um, so what this prevents is it prevents from us having an over-demand for the next commodity um, you know, cultivation cycle, which tends to happen around, of course, like you're all well aware, the month of November and December. So because of the production that we have, um, you know, during the dry season, that production buffers the demand that is available in the market such that d during the next um, harvest cycle, we don't have that big of a demand having that big of an effect, um, you know, on price. Uh, but like I said, uh, dry season cultivation only applies to a few commodities. And even at that, it only has a marginal effect on the prices of commodities um, in question. And then, uh, what's the current performance of the FETCs uh, on the exchange? 
Um, thank you. Um, so the FUTC has done uh, fantastic this year. Um, the FUTC one, which comprises of maize, uh, sorghum and soybean, um, has gone up by more than 25% already from season till date. And also for the FUTC uh, two, which comprises of only maize and sorghum, has gone, gone up by, uh, more than five point, uh, uh, by more than 5% this year already. And you must remember that initially why we designed this product was for it to act as a middle ground between the fixed income products that are available on the exchange and then also the spot contracts. Um, so yes, the, the FUTC has done fantastic this year. And we do expect that, that uh, trend to continue uh, for the rest of the commodity trading season. All right, Michael, thank you so much. I think we have to switch the conversation now. Thank you so much, Michael. It was good uh, having that summary. You're with welcome, you. Minnie. So in other happenings with AFEX, the Africa Tech Summit kicks off today, drawing in on rival insights, networking, business opportunities, and it brings together tech leaders from African ecosystem and international players under one roof. AFEX would be holding a side event to discuss the impact that technology has had on the trade infrastructure, from creating better market opportunities for producers, easing participation for various levels of investors in supply chain activities and increasing in transparency and security for players on both ends of the market. But well, we have Ulua Funto Olashemo, the Vice President, Financial Markets at AFEX, to tell us what AFEX is doing here and what we should expect from them. Hi, Ulua Funto, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. So in discussing how technology can impact agriculture, what are the critical touch points to pay attention to? Oh, thank you very much for the question. Um, the impact of technology on the entire agricultural ecosystem is something that I personally am passionate about and I really love to discuss. But to help us fully dimension um, the impact of technology on the agricultural landscape, it is important that we look at the agricultural sector as a value chain system where all the processes needed to take agriculture from commodity or from the production to consumption are tightly integrated. And what do I mean by this? We talk about um, the pre-planting activities up until um, the production of the commodities to offtake processing and ultimately um, the marketing of the commodities or the product. Um, there are a number of critical touch points to pay attention to. Um, in discussing the impact of technology on agriculture. And one of them is improving agricultural productivity. As you are aware, more than 80% of crop production in Nigeria and Africa at large are being done by smallholder farmers. And it is important for you to dimension the challenges that hinders their productivity vis-a-vis and limited access to quality input, limited access to, um, to land for cultivation, limited access to um, credit facility. I always say that bank, uh, farmers are highly bankable. Um, the challenge has always been, um, who are these guys? Creating some sort of um, form of identity for these farmers and to understand the operations vis-a-vis -vis what are they planting, what volume are they doing, and what are their credit history like. Um, ability to then harness all of this data together would help channel and, uh, and position the right technology solution to help increase and improve um, agricultural pro productivity. Also, it is important to also talk about access to market and, and, and finance generally. Statistics have shown us that the financing gap um, in Africa generally is about 65 billion um, dollars when you talk about a big financing gap, right? Um, however, in spite of what this gap essentially says is that there's opportunity for money to be made. Um, but in spite of this opportunity, a lot of financial institutions and fund providers are seriously averse to providing the needed credit. And this is because of this lack of um, transparency coupled to um, coupled with information asymmetry. Um, what technology can then help us do is that it can help create um, transparency by exposing to the fund provider the fund providers the need the data that need they need to do the necessary analytics and to also then foster the flow of finance into the sector and we could also then leverage on big data analysis that would then query data identify trends and test assumptions um, another thing, um, critical touch point when you're looking at access to finance and market is then to talk about the blockchain technology where you can then enhance distribution of data and transparency of data. Ultimately, the goal of making the, the, the agricultural sector transparent through technology is to increase the flow of fund to the sector and then help the 
value chain participant to be able to access the necessary finance and market. Um, again, just as I mentioned, understanding the landscape means that you have to understand that the various operations within the agricultural um, sector don't act in isolation. So it is important that um, a critical touch point is integrating the value chain, which then makes all the geogra geographically dispersed um, producers of this commodity come together into an ecosystem that then eliminates the middleman who, who has been the one that has favored the most from the entire value chain. And then technology can then help to smooth the market gap, bring the producers of these commodities and the com consumers of these commodities together. All right, so the convergence of uh, agriculture, technology and finance has been a conversation for a long time. I mean, uh, how do you think that this can disrupt agriculture trade infrastructure? Thank you very much. Very interesting question, I may say. And um, so in, in terms of if, um, at FX, our thoughts and what we are doing in ensuring that agricultural trade infrastructure are disrupted by technology is, is the fact that technology can help unlock the full potential of the agricultural trade by improving the efficiency in our ports and our custom. And this would ultimately in, in, reduce the cost of doing transactions um, because then you can leverage on technology to provide a suitable avenue for, um, for, for clearing and settling of this transaction. Also, the time you spend in, in, in clearing some of these um, activities, if you have a central payment and settlement system, that leverage on technology, it reduces the turnaround time for the payment of um, trade or settlement of trade, intra particularly intra-African trade. And it ultimately reduces the cost of doing trade within the country and across the country. In addition to that, I did mention about blockchain technology. Blockchain technology can actually introduce some level of transparency, and this can be leveraged on to create innovative financing that would ultimately disrupt the agricultural trade infrastructure. What are some of the challenges that FX has had to face in trying to foster the collaboration between these three sectors? Um, as you're aware, Vision and FX is to be the reference point for commodities exchange in Africa. And what this means is that FX is building lots of physical and technology enabled infrastructure that would provide access to market and unlock capital for smallholder farmers, processors and export operators, right? Um, but all of this would not even happen without us facing certain challenges. And one of, a few of them is number one would be that for you to set up physical and technology enabled infrastructure, there is a large capital outlay that is required to kick off the initiatives and to put the framework in place. I'll give you a very classic example. Um, in, in gathering data, as of today, we have over half a million um, smallholder farmers information in our database. We collect market data across 200 market for you to be able to do that that require for that data collection analysis and distribution it requires a lot of manpower deployment and that comes at a very huge cost so the large capital outlay to kick off some of this initiative is a major challenge that we are facing and um because we're a private entity, right, it, um, then it can, it then begin to look at it in terms of what level of data should you be gathering and how will it profit your operation as an organization. Another challenge um, that we face is how do you then manage the capacity of the end user with the sophistication of the solution you're providing? Again, just as I mentioned, a number of the producers of these commodities are small older farmers that have very little or limited education. Um, so and you have to create technology that are written in English and that would be accessed by, by, by um, technology platform like mobile platforms, um, right? So how do we then merge the capacity of an Awusa man that does not speak English? How do we translate um, the functionalities on this solution to something that he can relate with is another challenge that we face. There's also the market sensitization and orientation, particularly with the capital market operators. Um, most capital market operators, the equity market is very mature, the fixed income market is very mature, but the commodities market is still growing. So there's a lot of capacity building and orientation that we need to do with the, com with the capital market operators to help them understand the entire process of securitization and how commodity can be leveraged um, as financial instrument for capital gain. Um, last but not the least that I would like to talk about are regulatory bottleneck. Um, and permit me to say that regulation is very important in giving confidence to participants 
in the market. However, globally, regulation is always known to be behind innovation. And a lot of times, these tend to be major challenges when you are then creating and developing product um, that you need to take to market because you then need to begin to do things within the framework of, of regulation. And then that tends to slow down the development and the ultimate go to market of some of the innovations that we're bringing to bear. So I can tell that, Ulu Afunto, you're very passionate about this. <laughs> but very briefly now, because we're almost out of time, could uh, some policy directions be developed to promote the convergence of agriculture, technology, and finance in order to increase agricultural productivity? Uh, you know, if you have a few policy directions, just very few, because we're almost out of time. Yeah, so absolutely. Again, it is the role of the government and regulatory and, and agencies to support and create an enabling environment for entities like AFEX to thrive in what they do, right? And some of the policy points that can be created would in, for me, I am very big on data. There has to be policies around data collection and distribution. Um, the challenge with data in Nigeria, it's not like some of these data are not available, but a lot of them are available in isolation. How do we then create an environment where data can easily be shared um, in order to leverage on what someone already has done then to build uh, on top of that, rather than recreating and reinventing the wheel each time we need to create a product. Um, there's also the, the policy direction of having to create schemes that will, pro that will promote the inflow of funds um, from the capital market into the agricultural sector. Um, um, the infrastructural requirements for the agricultural sector is huge, and a lot of times um, policies and schemes from the government is the only way to float and implement some of these um, right. infrastructural needs. All right, yeah. Olua Funso, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure this is a continuous conversation. Uh, this is not the end. And of course, when we finish with the conversation, we'll talk about implementation of it. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and what you are doing at AFEX. Uh, Olua Funto uh, is uh, the Vice President of um, Financial Markets at uh, AFEX. Thank you so much. We'll take a break now. When we come back, remember that conversation on Nigeria and Ghana? That's where we're going to next. Just stay with us. It's Business Morning on Channels Television.